Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Mr. Sen. Alright, so uh, in today's video, we'll be looking at differentiation involving the natural log. The one that's called in or ln, as most people prefer. Anyway, uh, let's get to it. So remember, differentiation is all about finding the gradient at a particular point of the curve. It's like you're trying to find the slope. But anyway, this type of differentiation, say you have a function f of x. Suppose f of x is equal to n of something, ln something. So whenever you have a function as ln something or in something, what you have to understand is this. The derivative of this function, which we call f prime of x, will always be equivalent to 1 over something times the derivative of something. Be mindful of this. So the derivative, sorry, yeah, the derivative of a function such as f of x is equal to in something is simply 1 over something times the derivative of something. Remember, in something, its derivative is 1 over something times the derivative of what? Something. Be mindful of this. It's a very, very important way to remember it. Yeah. So, like I even told you the last time in a different video, somebody says hi, just say in something, is equal to 1 over something times the derivative of something. Somebody asks you, say, how is your day going? Just say in something, is equal to 1 over something times the derivative of something. Or do you like in something? Is always one over something times the derivative of something. I, I, I guess you get the point. Anyway, let's move on with examples so you can quickly understand what we're trying to look at. All right, so say we have examples. Examples that ask us to say find dy of dx. So to find dy of dx, say of this function. Given you given something like y is equal to x to the seventh. So let me not say this. Y is equal to ln x to the seventh. Yeah, more like it. So what you have to understand that this is also written in this form, you know, x to the seventh. So all you have to do here is simple. So to find the derivative of this function, so you say y prime is equal to one over something. So now here, what is our something? Let's collect data. What is our something? So something here is what? X to the seventh. So what we'll do is this. We'll say let P equal to what? Something. Therefore P is now at X to the seventh. So it's going to be one over something. So something here is what? P times the derivative of what? Something. Which is the derivative of what? P. Which is going to be P prime. So now let's find P prime. Let's differentiate P. So we differentiate p with respect to x using the power. Now do you do that? The power that you have multiplies the coefficient of x, of which in this case is 1. So it's like 7 is multiplying 1, and then the power of 7 is reduced by 1. Then p prime is equal to 7 times 1. It give you a 7. x to the 7 minus 1, that's a 6. So y prime is 1 over p times p prime. Therefore, if we substitute y prime is equal to 1 over p, what is the value of p? Remember, p is here. p is x to the seventh times the derivative of p, which is 7x to the sixth power. Therefore, y prime can be written as 7x to the sixth power over x to the what? Seventh power. And this is your final what? answer. Others would prefer to reduce this, whether we say, okay, 6 there into 6, 6 x's, cancel out 6 x's from the 7 x's. And you just have something as 7 over what? x. as your final answer. So you could end here or just here. Either ways, you'll still be correct and you'll still be marked. All right, let's move on to another question. So question number two. Say y is equal to ln of 1 over what? x to the fifth power. So here you have to first identify what the something is. Yeah, that's the whole point. Identify what the something is. So what is the something here? So remember, let's let 
and let's let any variable other than y or x equal to something so in this case i choose p so p is equal to what something so since p is something what is my something in this given function so p is one of what x to the fifth power because y being equal to n can be written in brackets as one over x to the fifth so you can see clearly so now remember the derivative of this is going to be one over something times the derivative of something with the something is one over x to the fifth so now we know that p is a something let's apply the derivatives so it's going to be y prime is equal to one over something remember something is p so one over p times the derivative of something which would be p prime so let's find p prime so before you even find p prime we know that p can also be written as what one times x to the minus five therefore p prime will be the power of minus five multiplies the coefficient which is one then the power of minus five is reduced by what one now this will now be p prime being equal to minus five times one will give you minus five x to the minus six therefore you will have your final answer so that is what our p prime is so we'll say y prime is equal to one over what one over what p which is p is equivalent to one over x to the fifth x to the fifth times p prime which is uh, minus five x to the minus six now it's going to be a bit interesting because you can't leave your answer in ambiguous form as this is let's put it in a way that is more polished but even if you left it here you still be marked you would still get a mark but just for accuracy purposes and making things better let us find means of putting this in a very very nice way all right so now let's do this we can choose to say okay uh y prime is now equal to one over one divided by one over x to the fifth like that and then you know that this guy here can be written as minus five over x to the what positive six therefore you know that division changes into what multiplication so you have y prime is equal to what one over one times x to the fifth over what one and then you have times minus five over what x to the six so y prime is equal to x to the fifth over one times minus five over x to the six this would be minus five x to the fifth over x to the sixth and this will also be your final what? answer or others would prefer to reduce it and yeah reduce it simplifying it in a better way so you could say y prime is equal to okay five x's could go into this number of x's so you can mean with one of x's so you have one minus five over x as your final answer answer and this will be our derivative that we are interested in all right i hope it's clear now let's move on to a different uh example so let's look at example three i know i said it with letters but we can still move on to some numbers so let's say you have f of x is equal to three over x to the seventh all right you can pause this video and attempt to try it on your own yes but uh it's not supposed to be, it's not really supposed to be like this it's supposed to be in of sorry about that three over what, x to the seventh yes so you can pause this video like i was trying to say earlier on and attempt to do it on your own i'm trying to make these videos similar with the previous examples i was using so that you can actually get familiar with the concept all right so you have in of three over x to the seventh power so remember in your data all you have to find is a something so i can let p be equal to what something all right so now p is a something that we're interested in so p is what's the something this guy here three over x to the what seventh all right so remember the derivative of a function in the form of ln to something will always be one of the something times the derivative of what something so you say f prime of x is equal to one over something here my something is p so i say one over p times the derivative of something which would be p prime so now i know what p is but i don't know what p prime is so i can find p prime so before i find p prime i can put p in a way i can understand so i'd say okay p is now equal to say three times x to the minus what seven then from here i can now apply the what basic power by saying okay p prime is now equal to the power of minus seven multiplies the three and so you get a minus seven times the three times the x the power of minus seven is reduced by one so you get a p prime to be equal to seven times three it's a negative form get a negative 21 x to the minus what eight 
So that's your answer. But let me put it in a way that is more understandable standard to say. So P prime is now equal to therefore P prime is now equal to minus 21 over x to the power 2, 80. Power. So that's your answer there for P prime. All right, now this is not the final answer. That's just data for what we need. Yeah, literally for just what we need. So we say, okay, F prime of x is now equal to 1 over P. What is P? Remember, P is 3 over what? Yes, over x to the seventh times P prime. P prime is minus 21 over what? X to the 80th power. Therefore, this guy here can be changed. Now, this is like the reciprocal of what you just have. But anyway, you can put it in this way. F of x is equal to 1 over 1 divided by 3 over what? x to the 7th. It's like you're just reciprocating what's at the bottom, the denominator times minus 21 over x to the 8. So you have f prime of x being equal to, remember, division changes to multiplication, we'll this in with 7, times x to the 7th over 3, like that, times minus 21 over x to the 80th power. Alright, so now f prime of x is equal to x to the 7th over 3, times minus 21 over x to the 8. So f prime of x can be equal to minus 21 x to the 7 over 3 x to the 8. Now we know that the uh, 3 can go into uh, 21, isn't it? Yeah. And we also know that the x's can reduce. So let's try and uh, simplify this for better uh, clearance. So 3 there is 1, 3 there is 7. You can cancel out 7x's from this. You can cancel out 7x's from there and just have 1. So therefore I would say f prime of x is simply is equal to minus 7 over x. Simple as that. Minus 7 over x. So that's our final answer. It's quite basic. Yeah. Alright. Let's move on to a different example. Uh, example number four says f of x is equal to n of, make it a bit interesting, v root of x. Alright, quite basic, simple, uh, so and do it. Alright, so the whole point is to find what the something is. So let p equal to what? Something. Now what is the something? The something is a root fifth root of x. Now, that's our p. So we know that whenever we have in something, it's going to be 1 of something times the root of something. So it's okay. f prime of x is equal to 1 over something. My something is p. So I'll say 1 over p times the derivative of what? p. So before I find the derivative of p, I can just say, okay, p can be written in x to the 1 over fifth. Like that. Because the power here is 1. So, I can now apply the power here and say p prime is equal to 1 over 5, x to the 1 over 5, minus 1 over 1. Alright, basically the power can be simplified just by the side. You can just say, okay, just do a basic data. So, what is 1 over 5 minus 1 over 1? Common denominator is 5, 5 into 5, that's basically 1 times 1, that's 1. Then you get uh, 1 into 5, when you maintain the sign there, it give you 5 times 1, that is 5, and you get a minus 4 over 5. Therefore, you could say p prime now is now equal to 1 over 5, x to the minus 4 over 5. So p prime, therefore, is equal to 1 over 5, x to the 4th over 5. Like that. We won't change it yet. We'll change it later on because we're not done with the question. Let's now try to substitute. So now f prime of x is equal to 1 over p, of which my p is x to the 1 over 5 times p prime, which is simply just 1 over 5x to the 4 over 5. It's 4 over 5. So, basically this can just be f prime of x being equivalent to 1 over x to the 1 over 5 times 5x to the 4 over 5. Because 1 times 1 just basically gives you 1. So now f prime of x is going to be 1 over... 5. Now here you have x to the 1 over 5 times x to the 4 over 5. Laws of indices. You can recall this. If you have a to the n times a to the 
b the value will just be a to the n plus b so what we have to do is to add the powers that we have there so we have 1 over 5 plus 4 over 5 common denominator is 5 it's so going to end up having a 1 plus 4 giving you a 5 over 5 which just gives you a 1 basically because you just end up having a 1 because 5 over 5 is just basically 1 so be mindful of it yeah therefore f prime of x is equivalent to 1 over 5 x put 1 there for explanation purposes can clearly understand what's going on all right so this is how you go about solving this question okay let's look at something interesting all right this two should be question I lose count at times. All right, so this this is question five now. All right, let's go to question five. Say f of uh, t is equal to n of minus two t squared plus three t minus six. The whole goal is to know what the something is. So we'll just look for your data and say, okay, let me let my p be equal to something. So my p is equal to what? Minus 2t squared plus 3t minus 6. So now f prime of t will be 1 over something, which is p times derivative of something, which is p prime. So I can find my p prime here. p prime will be, if we apply the power, basically we should know this by now. So it's going to be minus 4t plus 3. From there, we can now substitute in what we have our expression for f prime of t so we say f prime of t is now equal to 1 over p of which p is minus 2t squared plus 3t minus 6 times the derivative of p so we put this in parentheses this will be minus 4t plus 3 therefore f prime of t is equal to minus 4t plus 3 over minus 2t squared plus 3t minus 6. This is, your, this is your final answer. It's not really in any need of simplifying it. Furthermore, let's just let it be here. All right, so now that's how you go about it. So I hope you understand how to go about with this uh, type of differentiation. It's very simple. The all goes to know what something is. The moment you know what something is, yourself. Let's just look at the last example. I'll make it a bit simple. Example 6. f of x is equal to ln of 6. Alright, remember, the all goes to know what something is. So, what is the something? So we let p equal to something, isn't it? Let p equal to something. Therefore, p is 6. So you know f prime of x will be 1 over p times p prime. So now what is p prime? Remember, the derivative of the constant is 0. So you end up having f prime of x being equal to 1 over p, which is 6 times 0. So f prime of x is equal to 0 over 6. Therefore, if prime of x is just 0, which concludes that the derivative of a constant is basically 0. I hope you understand. If you have any queries or questions, you can contact me on WhatsApp, the number that is on the screen on top there, or the number I will put in my description. All right. This is Mr. Osen. What's up? Don't forget to like and subscribe. Remember, strategize before you become a statistic. Unless you want to push for that A plus.